In this lesson, we're going to look at the functionality and usage of network security groups. I think about I have a certain virtual network. So I have my VNet. And remember that virtual network exists within a certain region. It cannot span regions. So it lives within a certain region and a certain subscription. Now by default, hey, we break this down, remember, into different subnets. And there is free flowing communication between things in those different subnets. Remember, if I peer a virtual network to another virtual network, so there's some peering going on there, they also have free range communication. If I was to take an external network, could be on premises or in another cloud, and I then connect that, that remember could be a site to site VPN, or it could be express route private peering. By default, again, these IP spaces become part of what is considered the virtual network IP space. I, it has complete free flowing. I can go outbound to the internet. I can go, so I can go internet and I can go out to other kind of Azure services. Inbound, no, I can't get inbound from the internet, but I have all of that. Built in is this idea of a stateful firewall. It's just native to Azure, which is why I can go outbound to the internet and get the response back, whereas something coming in from the internet would not be allowed in. But what about if I wanna control this? What if I wanna have more granular control, maybe between subnets? Maybe I want to allow in a certain communication from the internet. Maybe I want to restrict what I can do to another virtual network. So the way we do this is we create a network security group. Then a network security group has to be in the same subscription and same region as the virtual network. And what I do is I create rules. So there are one or more rules defined in that network security group. Now that rule is based up of, obviously it has things like a name. I have a priority. And then it's based around the idea of, well, the destination and source, IP, port, and protocol. And then I have an action. So do I allow or deny? So I create a whole set of these rules. Now I said IP. Some of the services, like an Azure storage, have so many different IPs, this would be very hard to manage. So where I say IP, there's also the option around service tags. You may also hear the idea of application security groups, which is really just a tag I can apply to a network interface card. So if we go and look, this is probably easier to understand. So let's quickly go and look at our network security groups. So I can see I've got a number of different ones, but I'm just gonna look at this basic NSG front end. And there are certain rules that are just built in. Now you'll see these 65,000, let's collapse this down a little bit, there we go. We can see there are these 65,000 ones, it's a very low priority because it's a high number, that allows everything inbound so anything, any port, any protocol from anything in the virtual network to anything in the virtual network, we're gonna allow it. We're also gonna allow anything from the Azure Load Balancer. Now notice that word Azure Load Balancer, that's a service tag that represents the Load Balancer service of Azure, but then we're gonna deny everything else. So when we think about, oh, other stuff from the internet or anywhere else, it's not gonna let that in. So this is inbound. So they're default rules. Notice I've also added my own rule that I called web, that 443 inbound from the internet, I'm allowing in. So because I'm gonna offer services out to the internet. And then we have outbound rules. Outbound rules, well, what it has here is allow VNet outbound to anything, to anything in that known IP space. It allows anything out to the internet, so that's outbound, and because it's stateful, it will let the response come back, and then it denies everything else, although there really isn't very much left. 
but I can add my own rules. So if I think about outbound, the source, I could say anything from my virtual network or an IP address or that tag I talked about that you can generate. So I'll say anything from my virtual network coming from any port. Now my destination, I could do as an IP address or a tag, or I could do service tags. So when we look at service tags, we'll see there's a whole number of these different service tags. These represent a set of IP addresses for these particular services. So there's some very common ones. So we talked about these already. Virtual network is not just the IP space of the virtual network I'm on. It includes any IP space that I'm connected to through peering or site site VPN or express route private peering. Then there's the Azure load balancer. And then there's internet. So internet is the entire IP space that is not the virtual network. But then there's all these special ones, for all the different services based around all the different regions. So maybe I want to allow access to Azure Key Vault in UK South. So I could add that as a tag, or again, I could just use IP addresses. And then I pick the port. So I can pick the port if I do custom, or maybe it's a well-known port. And if I select a well-known port, well then it's gonna pick the port for me automatically, and it's gonna pick the protocol. And then I specify, is it allowed or denied? The priority, a name, and optionally a description. And so that's what NSGs are. NSGs are simply these sets of rules that I create. And then what I do is I take this NSG and I link it to a subnet. So I apply it to a subnet where those rules are then applied. Now it is also possible to apply an NSG to a network interface card of a VM, but it doesn't give you additional protection. It just makes it very hard to manage. The network security groups are not some edge device on the subnet. They're actually enforced on the host, on the switch that runs the VM. It's just from a management perspective, we can apply them at a subnet level for ease of management. But they're actually enforced on the host that's running the VM and it looks through its virtual switch whether it should allow it or not. So there's no additional protection by adding it to a NIC as well. It just makes it more complicated. But I can technically link it to a subnet. And if you really wanted to, if I think about a VM, and it has a NIC, I could, although we really don't want to, I could apply it to a NIC as well, but that makes it hard to manage. So we don't really want to do that. So now I'm controlling that flow. And again, I would probably link it to multiple subnets where I want any of that protection to happen. And it's now giving me that complete control and giving me the protection I want. So if you think about, hey, I need to restrict communications between flows of these subnets or to this peered network or to an on-premises, and I need to think about IP address ranges or maybe some Azure service, chances are the right answer is gonna be that network security group. And you can always go and actually look at a NIC and it will show you all of the NSGs that are actually being applied.